Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for, for attending this day two of this uh, first training sessions of the CODI series at NERSC and OLCF. Um, yesterday, uh, we had a first introduction to CODI to, and we saw how we can follow a simple and predefined uh, sequence of steps using CODI command and tools to finally uh, port your code to GPU. And we use as examples, a very simple example for the Pi code and another simple, but a bit more complicated, uh, Matmul matrix matrix multiplication code. And today uh, we plan uh, to do the following in the three hours we have ahead. Before the break, we plan also for a 30 minute break again at around 7.30 our time, so within one hour, one hour, 15 minutes. And for the first part, what we will be seeing is uh, how you can use uh, CODI to detect defects in your OpenMP or OpenACC codes. What this means is that once you have taken your sequential code, you decide what parts of the code want to offload and you add pragmas to it, CODI can understand the code, can understand your pragmas and check if the pragmas are correct for the code that you are offloading. This is what we call detect defects in your GPU enabled code. So during, before the break, we will be first seeing very briefly which are the defects currently supported. And uh, we will present you with an exercise that we can cover probably in the next 30, 35 minutes uh, for you to use the, uh, Kodi to detect one defect in, in DPU code. Right after that, we will see a, another short slide deck um, to understand what is the, comple the added complexity of real codes, why things are similar but significantly different to having isolated kernels like Pyot Matmul. What are, what are the challenges behind real codes or the additional things we need to consider? And for that, we will be just reviewing very, very briefly or enumerating some of the difficulties you have for real codes. And we will be presenting you with the Lulesh MK example, which is a simplification of the Lulesh Coral benchmark, but it still contains functions of the Coral of Lulesh that are real, that literally the same part of the, uh, of the code of the Lulesh benchmark. And we will present you how and show you through slides only how using the same sequence of steps, you can port your code to the GPU. Uh, also before the break, we, we plan to do uh, a demonstration of CODI using Fortran codes. This uh, Fortran support is experimental yet. We finished a development internally one month ago. And during this uh, term until June, we plan to be testing it internally or, or with early adopters. Uh, that want to test the Fortran code, early, early releases of Fortran code. So today you will be seeing the Pi example and the matrix matrix multiplication example written in Fortran, the same examples than today, than yesterday. And now you will see the same workflow in Kodi producing similar results for Fortran code. So the codes being ported to uh, GPU. And then we will do the break. And after the break, we will stop talking and you will have opportunity during a free hands-on session to continue doing the labs, to do the new labs using Lulish MK, or as Helen suggested, we encourage you to bring your own codes and try to uh, follow the initial steps to get started with Kodi so that we can help you during this session. If something happens, then of course we always have, can continue conversations after the course through appointment sessions that NERSC is going to facilitate in the coming weeks or months. Okay, so this is the, the, the plan for today. So let's start with uh, the next lab, the third lab that we propose. That is, we saw a set of GPU challenges that we need to address. And today we will be seeing how we can use CODI to identify defects in GPU code, particular defects in data transfers. Data transfers that are coded using OpenMP or OpenACC pragmas, but that seem correct, but that they are correct, incorrect for some reason. 
So from all of the uh, capabilities that we showed yesterday, presented yesterday about Kudi, from the actions report that you see in, in the performance optimization report produced by Kudi, we have opportunities, recommendations, defects, and remarks. Today in this lab, we will be focusing on defects. So if you look at the catalog that we have open and we encourage you to use, review, learn from it, and of course, always please feel free to contact, reach out to us or to NERS, so we can identify new actions or elements that we can add to the catalog. We're always learning and working collaboratively with the, with the community on this. So from the open catalog that you can see in the website, we will focus on the section of defects where we have today implemented 11 defects. Using the software, you can also uh, take the defects and navigate the defects in a different way. Remember the six stages of the performance optimization roadmap. Three sequential stages, optimizing sequential instructions, simplifying the control flow, optimizing the memory usage, and the three, three uh, stages related to parallelism, vectorization, multi-threading, and offloading. So today, in version 1.3.1, the 11 defects correspond, three of them, to offloading to GPUs, particularly data transfers, and the remaining eight correspond to incorrect coding, multi-threaded uh, code using OpenMP, essentially. So, uh, from the challenges we saw yesterday, identifying opportunities, we know how to find that in the performance optimization report produced by Kodi. We saw the importance of array shaping, the importance of selecting and implementing a coding structure, a structure in our programs to represent matrices. And how can this, this can impact on the way we need to manage uh, data transfers? So today, what we will be seeing is how these data transfers due to the data structure that we have selected can be incorrect, although they look like uh, being correct. And this is related to the uh, well-known problem of deep copy. So copying complex structures that are built with pointers and navigating the pointers to move all the co data correctly from the CPU memory to the GPU memory, typically what is called deep copy. So as usual, and we always want to remark this many times. It's up to us developers that we are responsible for making a correct usage of the language, of the programming language, of the compiler that implements and support the specification of the language. And of course, the parallel programming API that we use, OpenMP, OpenACC, or any other one, we need to learn the rules and we need to learn to use it appropriately in a proper manner. So it's up to us to use it consistently so that the compiler can do the rest of the hard work. So for this uh, case, we're going to use part of the materials we introduced yesterday. If you remember, we have this multidimensional matrix, let's call it a 2D matrix, that can be, this is the logical structure layout of the data in our, in our minds, but this is not necessarily how data is actually located in the physical memory of the computer. So in order to control this, this is up to the programmer to decide which data structure is going to use to represent logical matrices. And depending on the data type and how we declare the matrices in, the pro, in our C, C++ or Fortran program, we can have the data consecutive in memory. This is highly desirable for performance because when we have all the data consecutively in memory, in a natural manner, we can traverse all the data set and this enables to make efficient computations. This enables to implement efficient uh, message passing or efficient communications of data because data can be packed in one single hardware instruction. But when we, when we need to use large or extra large amount of data, typically a statically located memory is not enough. It has its limitations. So we need to use the heap and so we need to use dynamic memory allocated in the dynamic memory of the computer. And then we enter in the world of pointers. So here, when we have a double pointer implementation for a logical 2D array, logical matrix. In the, in, the, in the double pointer in C++, we don't have a guarantee that all the data of all the rows is stored consecutively in memory. This is important to remark because when we want to transfer three rows in one single operation, we cannot do it because all the nine data elements in this example are not consecutive in memory. We need to do it by segments. 
first send row, row number one, next send row number two, next send row number three. If we try to send all the nine elements starting in the element, the position of the first element of the logical matrix, this will fail. This is what is remarked here. So this relates, if you remember, and now I'm jumping to the to the lab 